Republican Congressman Robert Pittenger, member of the Financial Services Committee from North Carolina. Thank you very Sorry, much Alex. for joining me. I'm glad you're here. Um, I, I want to point out that you, sir, were uh, one of only 87 Republicans who voted in favor of the deal. What made you break with the majority of your party, and how difficult was that decision? Well, I voted, Alex, uh, to restore our government. I felt it was the important thing to do. Uh, during the summer, uh, there were, well, I had a number of town hall meetings, and, and at, at those times I stated, you know, that uh, trying to go after Obamacare was a a, a worthy effort, but one that would was really an ill-fated strategy. Uh, that's Mr. Obama's signature uh, legislation. He has his name on it, notwithstanding the many problems with it and the deficiencies. In North Carolina, premiums for small businesses and individuals are going up two to three hundred percent. Loss of jobs, companies are not hiring full-time people. The cost of it, the Congressional Budget Office says it's unsustainable in terms of the cost. So it was certainly a worthy goal, but given the Democrat commitment. Uh, toward this legislation and this being the legacy of the president, um, uh, it was going to be an enormous challenge and I didn't feel like it was going to mm. be achievable. Cool. So, uh, you know, it's important now to get our government uh, running. Yeah. There are many businesses that have been affected. Frankly, our national security is affected. I'm chairman of the Congressional Task Force on Terrorism and Unconventional Warfare. Uh, it affects the funding for, or did affect, for the CIA, FBI, Homeland Security, Border Security, uh, other uh, interests that we have. Uh, you know, our, our enemies, uh, they're relentless. They're not sleeping. They're right. not waiting. They're, they're not on a shutdown. Yeah, no, we so, were definitely, we were talking about that during the 16-day break and how concerning that was. And it sounds to me, sir, like you're able to see the forest through the trees overall. But did you just hear Kevin Weber, the chef there at the Cliff House who preceded you? I mean, what do you say to people like that who are left with, you know, irrevocable changes now to, to their businesses. And frankly, the greater challenge truly is it really the impact of this Obamacare. It is having an, an extraordinary impact on business. Companies don't want to hire. Um, they don't know the cost. And right. what they're seeing what they're seeing thus far but, but that, is very scary. Sir, they're, with all due respect, it, that, 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 is, that, is, sir, that is somewhat intangible at this point. I mean, it has yet to be implemented. We're, oh, we're it's, hypothesizing. It's very tangible. But what we do know is tangible is what happened in the last 16 days. I mean, people's paychecks have been directly affected. People are leaving jobs looking for something that will be more stable if they can find something. I mean, what do you say to those people who were so adversely affected? Well, I think there's terrible downsides. I, I couldn't agree with you more, but I, I do think the reality, though, of what's happened with Obamacare has already set in. Uh, I, I talk to businesses every day. You have major, major uh, companies who are not hiring. Uh, they are actually uh, downsizing. Or they're just they're staying under that threshold of of uh, 30 hours they don't they don't want to be be affected by the requirements and the cost of obamacare With this is pervasive this is throughout the country and and uh, that's that was a concern of a lot of folks absolutely it was but with regard to uh ultimately being worth it what happened that the gop instigated this economic uh, shutdown of, of the government was it worth it well as i said earlier uh, this summer, I, I said a, a number of town halls that it was a worthy objective, uh, but Mr. Obama is fully committed to Obamacare, and we have to recognize that politically. Uh, there was a, an effort made to try to dismantle it. I voted 15 times against it. Uh, I don't believe in it, but at the same time, I, I did not feel what, like that this strategy was going to work. What did what, you do the other, I guess that'd be 25, 26 no. times that it came up for a vote? Well, frankly, when we came back, uh, this shutdown could have ended uh, 10 days ago or more. Uh, you know, there were only two issues on the table that would have ended the shutdown much earlier, and that was the subsidy for members of Congress. I'd already released mine and said I wouldn't take it. Frankly, I don't, uh, uh, I don't take my salary. I donate it. But the issue was uh, related to uh, businesses who there's 1,100 corporations, and they've gotten a pass. They don't have to pay uh, any type of fee. Hmm. Uh, individuals now have that commitment, but they don't get a delay. I thought that was only fair. So just those two issues would have been addressed and agreed to by the Democrats. Uh, we could have ended this shutdown about 10 days ago. Can, can you look in your crystal ball, sir, and let me know what's going to happen come January 15th if we're going to go through this all over again? Well, I hope clear minds prevail. Uh, I think there has to be a recognition that we have a $17 trillion debt, a $60 trillion of unfunded mandates, and we have to address the debt. 
The president has been strangely silent since he's become president. I didn't hear it in his inauguration, his State of the Union, when he came to meet with uh, the Republicans. Well, but frankly, when he showed up, we stood and clapped. He's president of the United States. But he didn't want to talk about the debt. And frankly, he said deficits were really not a concern to him. The debt is, a, is an overriding concern in this country. If you were to talk to Peter Orzak, who was the budget writer for Mr. Obama, or Erskine Bowles, whom I've known for 20 years, the budget writer for Mr. Clinton, or to Paul Ryan, they're all telling you the same thing. That unless we get our spending addressed, uh, we are on a, a trajectory where we are going to collapse like Greece. This is the pervasive issue of this country, and we well, have to address it. A Republican congressman from North Carolina, Robert Pittenger, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Good to be with you. Thank you.